As Unitarian Universalists, we can be proud of our denomination's long history of embracing sexuality in all its forms. But despite our, our denomination's sex-positive posture, many of us, myself included, struggle with the paradox of sex and spirituality. We ask ourselves questions like, when is sex holy? Or, is it wrong to have this urge I'm having? Or, how will I find my heart's true desire? I think at heart, these are theological questions. This past January, I was taking classes at Meadville Lombard Theological School in Chicago, where I'm a second year student. I invited some Unitarian Universalist seminarians to talk to me about their theology of sexuality. Four brave souls stepped forward, and here's some of what they had to say. So I grew up in the UU Church, and I feel so lucky to have done so because I grew up with an idea that my body, that sexuality, that physical interaction with others was not only an accepted but a celebrated and integrated part of who I was as a spiritual person. Interesting topic. Uh, I don't uh, think of myself as having a theology of sexuality. Uh, I do uh, feel that I have an implicit uh, set of assumptions that could be formed into a theology if uh, someone wanted to help me do that. Uh, In the bigger picture, my deeply, most deeply held Unitarian Universalist value is that first principle of the inherent worth and dignity of every person. And that really, for me, just feeds into, in terms of sexuality, the idea that I can ask for what I need, I can say no to what's not right for me, those, those things can change, and I own that. Well, right off the bat, I think that about the binaries that we get caught up in, like male and female, and gay and straight and top and bottom and I think about how I just don't believe that God deals in binaries. I don't think God makes binaries. It wasn't just about sex. It was about covenant and how we build relationships with the people who matter to us. So, you know, being a Unitarian, I feel like part of the responsibility of being Unitarian is because um, that there's a responsibility to, uh, to not only fight the, the homophobia that I might have grown up with, but also to, to determine for myself what, what is my uh, gender preference in, in sexuality and the like. Um, but it also translates into how I view other people, and um, whether it's gender roles or sexuality. Um, I have a real passion for transgender rights, and I play in a band um, with someone on the transgender spectrum, and we sing and, and rock out about those issues. And so it's a lively, spiritual, musical experience for me that, um, that I tie back to um, my Unitarian Universalist beliefs and values. I think God makes spectrums, but they're not even really spectrums. It's really a circle. God makes a cycle or a an entire palette, but we have people decide that certain things are opposites and then that pass that down to us. And affirmed who we are as people with the right to choose who we love, how we love them, how we physically interact with each other. Everything from handshakes to hugs to kissing I will say that I, I feel that, uh, you know, sexuality and sex is, you know, it's part of the joy of life. Uh -huh. I mean, I think about, in terms of sexuality and religion, what I hope for my children. Um, I have a son who's three and a daughter who's five, and I hope that both of them sense a, a spirituality to their being, to their body, and that they, they don't um, separate the body from the spirit. That's something that is really important to me um, and something that I express through dance and music and worship. And, I, you know, I used to believe in that until one day I heard somebody, I had always believed that the opposite of love was hate, 
But one day somebody said to me, no, the opposite of love is indifference. Because in both hate and love, you have an investment. But indifference, you have no... And then I realized, oh, so these opposites are actually arbitrary. So when we build our interactions together, when we build covenant together, it's not just about our thoughts or our words. It's about every piece of who we are, and that includes our physical selves. For me, sexuality and teaching about sexuality is an integral part of how we form a church community that is truly a beloved community. Just making sure you're if you have kids that they understand, they learn well and safely and, uh, and without shame. I have two daughters, um, you know, the, the idea that either of them would experience shame for, for either orientation or for, uh, you know, responsible pleasure is just, uh, is really abhorrent, so. You, you get into this good and bad arbitrary thinking and then you start to believe that there's a list of right and wrong things that is hard and fast from the beginning of time. And that gets you into the kind of thinking where you think there's things, there's things you're not supposed to do. But I know in my heart that God does not have a list of acceptable sex practices. I love how the ideas you just heard show some of the great diversity of thought with our denomination, but also have a common thread this underlying value of compassion for each other and for ourselves. I pray that you can find a theology of sexuality that allows you to bring your whole self to your relationship, and better yet, brings you some good loving. Amen and blessed be.